Hey, podcast listeners, I'm Lauren Forbes, Lisey's social media and marketing manager, and I will be your host for Lisey's All the Things podcast. On this week's episode of Ask Me Anything, I am joined by Lisey's CMO and CMBDO, Robin Addis. There is no better time to talk about goals than the start of a new year. Since 2015, Robin has put together a list of goals corresponding to that year. So that's right. She came up with 23 goals, some personal, some professional. Find out which are her top three goals and if she will continue this tradition. Here is Ask Me Anything, this week's episode of Lisey's All The Things Podcast. Hi, everyone. (laughs) Welcome to Lisey's Ask Me Anything. As you can see today, I am joined in person by Robin Addis the CMO and CMBDO of Lisi. I am Lauren Forbes, the social media marketing manager at Lisi. Um, Today, we are going to be talking about goals for 2023 and what better time than to talk about them in the new year. Hi, Robin. Hi, Lauren. (laughs) (laughs) So we usually take the approach of, you know, people submitting questions and we answer them on the live. Um, But today, since we have a special edition of Robin's uh, goals for 2023, we thought we would just kind of answer, or I would ask you some questions about those. Sure. Um, So a little bit of background. Every year, Robin does a list of goals each year corresponding to the year. So we have 23 goals for this year. Oh, yeah, we sure do. How is putting that together? It was a beast. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Because... So when I first started this out, I started doing this back in like 2015, just for my personal Mm -hmm. goals. Um, And it was a beast back then. But what I try to do as far as doing it for Lisi is I try to really do my research leading into the new year. I start back in October, really sort of like what are, you know, experts in the industry or across marketing industry um, saying about what's going to be what was big in 2022, what they thought was big and maybe wasn't what they think is coming in 2023. Mm -hmm. And it's boring to sort of write the same thing over and over again. So I really try to find new and exciting things and, mm-hmm. and stretch our goals into new areas. So yeah, it, uh, the, the blog was 3000 words. <laughs> so if you ever want to know how long 3000 words is, go on our website mm-hmm. and you can see it. Yeah, so it's published there. You can read it. Maybe take your time, spread it out for a couple of days. Right? Or if you want some light reading before bed. <laughs> Um, and I noticed um, that you kind of did a mixture this time of personal and professional. Yeah. Um, what was kind of the change up from years past, adding some more personal stuff in? So it is a general overarching goal of mine to be very authentic and genuine, even though I sort of hate the overuse of those words mm-hmm. um, in my day to day and in what I, you know, how I act as a professional. So I wanted to be real that in some ways, like my last goal was focus on my mental health. Um, you know, I think on the spectrum of mental health, I probably am, you know, not that bad off necessarily, Mm -hmm. but the last quarter of the year was really, really challenging for me. I had a lot going on personally and professionally. And I thought, you know what, it's time to be real about that also needs to be something that Mm -hmm. we're focusing on, especially as people are going into 2023, there's lots of stress about the, you know, financial upheaval and the economy and just, you know, all the things Mm -hmm. as I say. So being real about that was really important to me this year. No, I, I appreciate that. And I think it'll touch home with a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, not only just new year, but it could be new things for job wise, you know, family wise could be new for anybody, everybody across the board. So Mm -hmm. um, of your 23 um, goals, what would you say the top three would be that like really at home that you really kind of want to focus on? Yeah. So I've heard the term ESG used a lot for, I mean, like a a few years, I would say since I was in the meetings and events industry, um, it was already a focus then in terms of um, ESG as it relates to in-person gatherings and meetings and all Mm -hmm. of that stuff. And seeing it broadly in the corporate context, I, it really resonated with me this year to think about ESG because I was tired of 
writing about a focus specifically on diversity and equity and inclusion, which is like table stakes. We should be focused on that. And I wanted to think of it sort of in the broader context of how to be socially conscious, environmentally conscious, um, and make sure that our policies and our procedures and all of the ways that we operate have those, that sort of social justice component Mm -hmm. to it. So just like a little tangent. So I went to a Jesuit college, which is where I learned what social justice was. (laughs) Um, and that has really driven my focus on service and um, giving back to my community Mm -hmm. for me on a personal level. And I try to bring that into how I operate as a business professional. So sort of taking that entire universe of things, I don't know what the right word is, and sort of thinking about how do we on a holistic level focus on diversity, focus on equity, focus on social justice, and and sort of put that into the driving sort of force behind how we do everything. So that's kind of where that comes, which is feels like, as I'm saying it out loud, feels like this huge lofty thing. <laughs> but, yeah. I, but I think, you know, it's like with anything, you're not going to go from here to here. Right. right. You're going to take little steps. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Um, I would say I'm looking at my list here too. Yeah. What would you say maybe number two is? Yeah. So one of the things that we, you know, that we've been talking about for a while is developing an on-demand educational portal. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of educational content. We produce a lot of educational content. And I actually got an incredible compliment on our content at one of the LMA holiday parties um, this past December which was that even though we're service providers and perhaps it's because all of us are either former in-house legal marketers or former practicing attorneys, but our educational content is truly educational. It's not like a secret, not so secret sales pitch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I, I know that we have a lot of knowledge and information to share. Mm -hmm. And so packaging that in a service value add for clients um, or in some way that people could access that content on an on-demand basis Mm -hmm. has been a goal of mine really for over a year now. Again, as you know, but maybe our audience doesn't know, um, we really focused on what it would take to make that work at some point this year. Mm -hmm. And so putting together that project timeline, we concepted the the programs that we would truly want to be able to launch with. Now I'm in the process of putting together that project plan. Um, and we're looking to launch that in the second quarter. So that's a huge goal. Yeah. I would feel like that's a huge feather in my cap if yeah. we actually get to that one. That's, it's exciting. It's a, an exciting new you know service that we're able or yeah. we're going to be able to provide. Totally. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting to me, just to dig into that even a little bit more, I th- so I'm completely self-taught in marketing. I, I have a political science degree. Mm-hmm. I actually tell people all the time, I guess I didn't know you to go to college because <laughs> everything I know about marketing I've learned on the job or from mentors or colleagues. Right. And so it's a little bit, from me personally, it's a little bit draw, driven by my desire to help people who are in the jobs that I was once in mm-hmm. understand what it is that they do or how to do it inside a law firm. So I think it's a lot different 20 years after I graduated college. It's a lot different now than it was when I was first getting into legal marketing. You know, you have people who have um, not just marketing degrees, but understand the difference between product marketing and professional services marketing. And that legal marketing is actually a profession. It's not just like a thing that they sort of fall into. So I think you've already got entry level and rising stars who are primed to understand these concepts, Mm -hmm. um, but just how to get better at it and how to understand it again in the broader law firm context is a, is a big part of how we're focusing on it too. Yeah. And I'm, I'm all for that because I also did not come into the legal world with a marketing, you know, degree, um, trial by fire, you know, you just kind (laughs) of jump in there and see what happens. Um, but I also think that's, um, great for us because we have kind of a different perspective Mm -hmm. on things and we're able to maybe show that the audience, you know, what we learned, um, that necessarily wasn't actually like taught with a, you know, book or by professor or something like that. Yeah. Like one thing I know that you put together, how did this even come together? Our glossary of terms. Oh, um, 
it was through some LinkedIn post that I think you put up. I, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like some term or something, right? It was right? some term. And then people started kind of, you know, adding their own kind of terms to it. And then I was, you were like, let's do this. <laughs> so that will be launched. Um, hopefully I think probably this quarter. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to add that to our yeah. resources. So Wait, even just that, like all the terms that you come into a law firm, no matter how much marketing training you have, you come into a law firm and you have no idea what, um, leverage is or matter billing lawyer yeah. is or anything like that. All of those terms that them, you know, to give yeah. anybody a leg up. A lot so of Google research searches. <laughs> I know. I know. Seriously. <laughs> all right. So your third goal, what do you, what do you think your third goal would be? To talk yeah. About? So my number, my top three goals round out with adding a director of um, client mm -hmm. relations to the team. Yeah. So we have, we all wear a lot of hats. We have sort of this structure, um, that understands the client journey if they enter through coming in for through our website or if they enter coming through our outsourced legal marketing services. And for better or for worse, I've sort of held this role part and parcel with another member of our team as this director of client relations, Taryn Elliott on our team who works with you closely mm -hmm. and does our leasing marketing, but also does client success. So sort of that ongoing yep. client relationship stuff. And we need that, but we really need somebody who is every day focused on how our services are being delivered to our clients and our processes and our communication. And it's, it's really tuning into clients. Mm -hmm. Law firms have this. Other companies have this um, across industries. Um, I don't know if service providers have it. Candidly, I, my experience has always been between a salesperson or a client success person, but really somebody who's there to make sure that that thread moves seamlessly mm -hmm. through internally and that it, you know, there's no hurdles or anything for our clients is really, really important. And I think it's a great opportunity for us. You know, we've grown so much over the past couple of years, which has been exciting. And yeah. now we're in a place, all of us across the board sort of have this goal for 2023 personally to like, okay, now let's just get really good at what yeah, it is that absolutely. we do. And this is like the version of that goal for the agency as mm -hmm. a whole. Let's get even better at what we do yeah. um, and, and provide that great client service delivery. So that's what that person will be joining us to do. Yeah. And is that... Um job description up anywhere just, just yet yeah it's, so it's posted on our website you can get the link through a, a, my three thousand word blog post <laughs> um and you know candidly i don't necessarily post it down on indeed or other job boards because um I want to, you know, it's, it's sort of table stakes that we have somebody who has law firm experience. Mm -hmm. So they understand sort of the world, the sure. universe in which we operate, but also, you know, I want it to be the right person at the right time. Kristen Brophy is a, gr a great example. Mm -hmm. She, I had had the job posted for our director of client strategy and I got a number of inquiries for it, but it just was never 100% the right person. And then, you know, through a twist turn of fate, Kristen was made known to me as somebody who might be a great uh, person for that position. So yeah, I'm just sort of following that model of it, the, when it's the right time for it to happen, it's going to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, we're going to keep on keeping on for right now until it's the right keep time. On keeping on. Keep on trucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. So any other kind of last words? Well, you do you plan on doing 24 next year? Or are we going to maybe pivot a little bit? So great question, Lauren. <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a beast to put this together. I'm not going to lie. And I also just felt behind the eight ball all December long. Um, next year's Lisey's 25th anniversary. Oh, yes. 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 So I, I might do a capstone 25 goals for Lisey's 25th. Okay. I think um, might be the end of the my end. list of goals. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I'm also always setting goals. So right. maybe I'll just, rather than do it as like one Big, huge, huge thing. List. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe like three, top three. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Top three goals. Pare, something. Pare it down a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know how competitive I'm, I am though. So I like, know. it's so great to like set this ridiculously large list and then be like, I did more yeah. than 50%. I mean, of this. I can say, I think, um, going back and looking at all of the, you know, lists that you've done, mm -hmm. 
I'm pretty sure that we've, you, the team in general, and Lisi have accomplished the vast majority. The, yes. Vast majority. Which is amazing. Yeah. You know? I know. I feel good about it. Yeah. As I said to my mother last night on the phone, you just have to have a goal you're working towards. <laughs> <laughs> and that will drive everything. Exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here of today. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you were not able to tune in today, you can always re-watch re the replay and look for it on our website um, and the podcast as well. Um, next Friday, we'll, we will be introducing a new segment called Behind the Bio with uh, one of our writers, Julie Ackerman. Um, we will be sending out and posting out um, some information about that. So stay tuned. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. You have been listening to All the Things, the podcast from Legal Internet Solutions Incorporated, where we bring you all the things. Whether it's three things we learned, hearing from a legal marketing insider, an Ask Me Anything session, or that one more thing we've been dying to tell you all month long, but couldn't. That's all the things. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you get your podcasts. And you can join us for the live events every Friday at 1230 Eastern on our LinkedIn channel for our live stream 